So the time has finally come. The 2020 NBA draft is tomorrow, so it is time for the final mock draft. So my mock draft the past couple of years haven't been great. I mean, mock drafts are super hard in their own right, but I'm feeling good about this year's. So a lot of things go into a mock draft and what a team does in drafting a player. They look at their characteristics, their peripherals, looking how they fit the team, culture-wise and play style. And I can put on my thinking cap and try to predict where these guys will go. But one thing that I don't have is I don't have any connections, man. I don't have any scouts. I don't have any general managers. I have no sources whatsoever. So I have no idea who these teams are eyeing besides looking Looking at who worked out for them publicly. So what I did is I took the four major draft outlets in my eyes, ESPN with Jonathan Gavoni, The Ringer with Kevin O'Connor, Bleacher Report with Jonathan Wasserman, and The Athletic with Sam Vesany, and I kind of put them all together and saw where their consensuses were at. So I used that a little bit just to kind of see what their intel was saying, but I did kind of come up with my own mock, but I'll show you guys what I did with that later or at the end of the video. But yeah, can we get maybe 1,500 likes for the 2022 final mock draft? I'm just excited that it is finally draft season. This was a crazy fun college year and just draft process in its own right and i'm just super excited for this draft because a lot can go down and there are some superstars in this class i'll also be live streaming the draft on this channel tomorrow for the full first round so hope i could see you there and i'm recording this on june 21st so you guys are going to be seeing this on the 22nd so if a trade happens i'll pop up in the middle of the video and say what the hell happened but yeah sorry for the long intro let's get into it and with the number one overall pick in the 2022 nba draft the orlando magic select jabari smith out of Auburn. Now, this is what I think will happen. This is not what I would do. I would obviously take Chet Holmgren number one. I've made that pretty clear in my big board videos and my GM mock that I just dropped on the second channel. But all signs are pointing to Jabari Smith going to the Orlando Magic at number one. This leads to a pretty clear selection at number two with Chet Holmgren going to the OKC Thunder. I'm just super excited about that fit with him playing with Shea Gilgis, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, if he doesn't get traded. But yeah, that will be the selection. Next up at three, I have the Houston Rockets taking Paolo Bancaro. I think this was a pretty clear sign once they moved on from Christian Wood. They're looking at one of these three bigs in the top three to pair up with Alperen Shangun in that front court. So the top three is pretty much a given, but number four is interesting. Now, if the Kings stay here or if they move the pick, I think whoever selects here at four would be Jaden Ivey. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the Kings just shook up the draft because that could be a Kings move and they go with Keegan Murray or they take somebody else not named Ivey. But I'm just going to take the chance on who's ever picking at number four would take Ivy because I think there's a chance maybe the Hawks are picking here, the Knicks, the Pacers, the Blazers, the Thunder Pistons, who knows? Some team could trade up to number four with the Kings because I think there has been some rumors that they would look to trade down because they do have Davion Mitchell and De'Aaron Fox in that backcourt. They're maybe looking for a three or a four to pair up next to maybe Harrison Barnes or mainly DeMonta Sabonis. But yeah, no matter the team, I think it will be Ivy here at four, but I wouldn't be shocked if the Kings kind of went with a pick out of left field. Speaking of picks out of left field, now pretty much for the last couple of months, up until like the last few weeks, I always had Shaden Sharp here at number five. I do not have him here anymore. And you might be like, Matt, Keegan Murray. And I'm not going Keegan Murray. I'm going Benedict Mather. And yes, this is where I was looking at some of the other draft analysts and what their intel was saying. And yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be Benedict Matherin at five if Jaden Ivey doesn't go at four. Because yes, if Keegan Murray goes four or somebody else not named Jaden Ivey, I think the Pistons would 100% select him. They have Jeremy Grant still under contract. We'll see if he gets moved. But either way, I think they would go with Matherin there to possibly be maybe that wing next to Cade alongside Sadiq. Bay. That leaves us here with the Indiana Pacers at six. I think they would select Keegan Murray. For now, he'd be in that front court with Miles Turner if he does get traded. That would also change some things. So yeah, I, I was pretty much Keegan Murray or Benedict Matherin at five and six. And so you, I, like you can go either or um, in the order. I could see Murray at five, Matherin at six. But for this, I have that in vice versa. And I have Keegan Murray going to the Indiana Pacers. Next up, we have the Portland Trailblazers. I have them selecting Shaden Sharp out of Kentucky, who didn't play any collegiate minutes. This is the biggest kind of wild card in this draft because we had not seen this guy play only in workouts for the uh, these teams. And I think they would go with Shaden Sharp. They'd have a pretty good guard trio with Dame, Anthony Simons, and now Sharp. But I could definitely see Portland trading the pick. All right, we have the Pelicans at number eight, and they're going to take one of my favorite players in this class, Dyson Daniels, as their hopeful future franchise point guard to play alongside Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson because Devontae Graham, I don't think, is the answer. Alvarado is a good point guard, but probably not a long-term starting point guard, more of a backup, ready-to-go guy in case of an injury. 
injury. So now we're up here at number nine with the Spurs. I have them adding to their pretty weak big man depth in Jalen Duran. So they're going to take Duran. He's going to be alongside Pirtle, who is a free agent. He might get the bag from some teams. So who knows if they're going to even be able to or even want to resign him. At number 10, we have the Washington Wizards selecting Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin to provide more scoring for them. Probably not going to be an option at the point guard spot in a position they desperately need. I mean, they went with Dinwiddie last offseason. That didn't work out. Maybe they move Bradley Beal to the point guard uh, full time and they have Davis be the two, but that is a selection at 10. And then I think a tier ends right here with AJ Griffin going to the New York Knicks at 11. I think they would take best player available and that's who I believe would be their pick here. And I do love Malachi Branham. I think he could be maybe this year's Donovan Mitchell from 2017. I'm saying that right now. Uh, so if he's a bust, you can come hate on me, but hey, if he turns out to be a really good scorer, come give me my flowers. But yeah, I'm going to have the Knicks take AJ Griffin at 11. Number 12, we have the OKC Thunder taking Usman Jang. This has been mocked by a lot of analysts, and I've been seeing kind of some reports with this as well. So for the longest time, I was mocking Mark Williams to the Hornets at 13, but then I was like, why would they take Mark Williams if the Cavs are behind them who have plenty of big men in Mobley, Marketing, Allen, Love. Like they're not going to take Mark Williams most likely at 14. Now, unless they do trade the pick, teams would probably be calling, but they could definitely get Mark Williams at 15. So they could look at an O'Shea Baji here. They could look at maybe Atari Eason, but I've been taking Jeremy Shohan, who I think is incredible value at 13. That leaves us with the Cavs at 14, somebody I've been mocking for so long. So if this happens, I'd be pretty happy. And that's O'Shea Baji going to the Cavs, giving them some leadership scoring because he's a senior, 22, coming out of Kansas, just won a national championship. He's going to help them try to be a top six seed in the East next year. Now we are done with the lottery. Let's go into the non-lottery picks. I kind of spoiled this pick a little bit ago. We have Mark Williams going to the Hornets here, just adding to that weak front court. Mark Williams, Jeremy Shohan, that would be a great draft for Charlotte. This is somebody that's been rising up boards as of late, and I have Jalen Williams going to the Atlanta Hawks out of Santa Clara, but it's looking like the Hawks could be a team that could trade their pick, maybe packaging that with John Collins and moving up in the draft, maybe to take like an Ivy or a Keegan Murray, but that wouldn't really make a lot of sense, uh, but maybe taking on like maybe Miles Turner, they could move Clint Capella. A lot could happen with Atlanta on draft night, but if they are taking or selecting at 16 still, I think Think they would take Jalen Williams. 17, we have the Houston Rockets and they're going to take a chance here on Malachi Branham out of Ohio State. Like I said, I think he could be a huge boom guy in this draft and maybe be this year's Donovan Mitchell. And I don't think I love any more picks in this draft than this one right here. Tari Eason going to the Chicago Bulls at 18 gives them some big man depth defensively. He joins Patrick Williams there. Yes, he's probably still a little bit too small to play the five with Vucevic there. And I'm sure they would love a Mark Williams, but hey, they can go out there in the trade market. Uh, maybe they sign a guy defensively, um, a veteran in that right. But yeah, I would just love Tari Eason on the Bulls because they desperately need to improve their defense. And then I think the Timberwolves would be very upset because they would want Tari Eason at 19, but I have them taking the next best, like his power forward on the board in EJ Liddell. I could see them also making a trade on draft night. At number 20, I have the San Antonio Spurs taking the 6'7 guard forward in Dalen Terry, who could probably be, I don't know, like he's just a developmental guy. And I think his potential is pretty much like up there. And that's why the Spurs can make this pick because one, they're still rebuilding. They're not in complete win now mode and they have three first round picks. So if they don't hit on one, it's not the end of the world. But if you hit on Dale and Terry, this could be a fantastic selection at 20. And then the Nuggets at 21 are taking one of my favorite players in this trip, Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame. I think he's going to be a great scorer at the next level. And him and Bowen Tyler off the bench in Denver would be so much fun to watch. I'm definitely watching them on week pass all the time next year if they take Blake Wesley at 21. Now we're here at 22 with the Memphis Grizzlies. They do have two first round picks and one of them is going to be Ty Ty Washington out of Kentucky with Tyus Jones being a free agent. He's probably going to get a lot of money out there and they're going to be paying John Morant a lot of money this offseason. So they're going to go through the draft to get that backup point guard and Ty Ty could be looked at as a top 15 guy talent wise and you're getting him at 22. That's a steal. At 23, we have the Philadelphia 76ers going with some big man depth. Oh my God, their center rotation, especially after they moved Andre Drummond last year, was brutal. So they're going to go uh, through the draft, get a backup center behind Joel Embiid in Walker Kessler. Bucks are here at 24, and I think so many teams like the Sixers, like the Nuggets, like the Heat, like the Warriors would love to take a chance on Jaden Hardy this late in the draft because the peripherals are there. The intangibles are there. He just didn't really play that 
like well offensively in the G League Ignite this year, but going into the preseason or going all the way back, he was a consensus like top five or at least top 10 guy in the draft. And you're getting him at 24. The potential is there. And like the Bucks, you kind of need to hit on this pick in a sense, like they just need to improve their bench. But if you can hit on Jaden Hardy, oof, you have Hardy, you have Holiday, Middleton, Giannis. That is a good core going forward. At 25, these Spurs are going to be taking Kennedy Chandler, just providing them with another guard there, just because, I mean, they could take a chance on Nikola Jovic, Chico Ravia, but I just think that just Chandler is a lot better of a player and it's a pretty much guard heavy class and you take Kennedy Chandler to be a backup. I mean, you can always have so many point guards. With the Rockets here at 26, I've been taking Marjan Beauchamp and I love this draft for them so far. Paolo Bancaro, Malachi Branham, and Marjan Beauchamp. I hope they are able to free up minutes by moving maybe Kevin Porter Jr. They already moved Christian Wood, John Wall, Eric Gordon. I want to see some of these young guys play. The Heat at 27 are going to be going with Bryce McGowns, the freshman out of Nebraska to help their bench scoring options. At 28, we have the Golden State Warriors taking Jake Laravia going with some big man depth that they pretty much need for next year with Draymond getting older. Wiseman's been injury prone so far. Kavan Mooney could leave in free agency. And that's why they're going to take Laravia out of Wake Forest. So final two picks here. I have the Memphis Grizzlies with their second first round pick taking Nikola Jovic. They have so much depth. So they could throw Jovic to the G League, help him develop down there or keep him up on their roster like Santi Aldama taking a guy that just has very high potential and Jovic has way higher potential than Santi Aldama did. And I just would love this pick for them because he doesn't need to make an immediate impact. Zaire Williams last year was another kind of raw prospect, but they were able to ease him in, get him some big time playing minutes and get him acclimated as soon as possible. And then finally, with the last pick in the first round, this could have been a plus of guys like Trevor Keels, like Christian Brown, like Wendell Moore, like Kendall Brown, like Christian Coloco, but it's going to be Andrew Nemhard out of Gonzaga. So yeah, this is going to be my official 2022 NBA mock draft. You guys are going to be seeing this pretty early on Wednesday. So between now and draft time, a trade could have happened and this gets messed up a little bit. But hey, if you watch the draft stream, I will update it there. And then also it is eight o'clock on Tuesday. So between now and when you see this video, a trade could have happened, but I would have popped in for an update. So yeah, we'll see how accurate this is tomorrow. And I hope you can make the stream. It'll be a lot of fun. This is like my third, maybe fourth year in a row live streaming the draft. It's a pretty much annual tradition. So yeah, drop a like if you guys did enjoy this mock. Let me know maybe your mock down below. And if you don't want to give me 30 picks, maybe give me five of your favorite picks or your top five or your top 10 or who you want your favorite team to select or who you think they will take. And just to quickly kind of show you how I came up with this mock. I took Gavoni's, um, the Athletics, Bleacher Reports and Ringers mocks pretty much as updated or their most recent mock. I kind of came up with their consensus here and wasn't going to go with the, uh, or didn't want to copy and paste the consensus. I made some alters to my own. Like I didn't want Dyson Daniels going seven to the Blazers. Thought that wouldn't have made a lot of sense and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys. I'm like, if you did enjoy and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.